Okay, guys, so this is going to be your first lecture. I'm pretty excited to uh, do my first recording lecture with you guys. Um, before we get into the lesson, just talk a little bit about um, where we're starting and where we're going. Um, we we're going to go into the next section that we had um, previously. Uh, we're going to go into coming back from the spring break. Uh, but since we've been out of school for two weeks, I want to go ahead and um, make sure that you guys are uh, can review a little bit before we get into the next section. So we're going to take a step back and we're going to talk about ratios and proportions. Um, you probably will remember them from right before we went on spring break. If you um, don't remember them, this is going to be a good refresher for you. If you do remember them, bear with me. It might be a little bit boring, um, but it shouldn't be too, too bad for, for either situation. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen with you here real quick. If I can figure out how to do that. Okay. So um, we were able to get the software, the TI Inspire software to work. Um, what you're going to have to do is if you're using your personal device, uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to follow a PowerPoint. And let me show you where the PowerPoint is if you haven't already discovered it yet. Um, before here, I had the TI Inspire COVID-19 support. You'll still need this link. If you um, are planning on downloading this onto your personal computer or MacBook, like not one from the school, uh, you can go straight to this link and, and follow the directions from there. But if you are doing this from your school MacBook, which most of us are, um, go ahead and open up this PowerPoint and follow the directions. You're still going to need this link, but follow the directions first. And then when they tell you to go to this link, go ahead and click on the link and then follow the directions. Okay. Once you get that set up, you should be able to have your, your TI Inspire. Okay. Just like how we um, use it in class and it's good for six months. So they're giving every student a six month free trial, which is fantastic. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the lecture here. Okay, so here is, let me minimize this. Well, I can't do it right now. Okay, so here's the first uh, set of notes uh, of what a ratio is. I'm sure you guys already remember what a ratio is. Uh, the nice thing about having these videos is that you can pause the video. So if you wanna pause the video now so that you can write this down in your notes. Okay, so what is a ratio? Basically what it says here, it's a comparison of two or more quantities. Um, ways to represent a ratio, you can represent it as a fraction. You can represent it uh, in plain English, A to B, or the notation with the semicolon, A to B, okay? Most of the time ratios, uh, it says here the ratios can be simplified. Most of the time you're gonna wanna simplify your ratio no matter what, okay? So if you are working with ratios, um, always remember to simplify that. Uh, last time in class, we talked about another type of ratio. Um, I didn't know what the name of that was, and I do. I found out here what the name of that ratio was. It's called an extended ratio. Okay, and I'm pretty sure you remember when we had some lessons or we had some problems like this on our final um, about extended ratios. It's the same thing as a ratio. Okay, again, it's a comparison. Um, but for an extended ratio, it can be three or more quantities, all right? So here's an example of an extended ratio, A to B to C. We're gonna see that again in the assignment today as we're re reviewing this. Remember guys, don't get, don't get frustrated that this is stuff you've already seen. Um, that's, that's the whole point of it, is that this is stuff we've seen before, we're familiar with it, and we're just trying to get ourselves re-familiarized with it because we're gonna need this information to go into the next proper um, section. Okay, so if you want to pause the video for that, so you can write that down. Okay, so that's extended ratios. All right, same thing as a ratio, just it has now uh, three or more. I remember one of our problems, we, if you remember from last time, it had like six different ratios in the extended ratio. Okay, 
And then from there, one last definition. Again, you should have these or remember these from last time. But if you don't, that's okay. Let me zoom out here. Proportion. Okay, what is a proportion? A proportion is an equation that uh, states two ratios are equal. Okay, and here's our example of what a proportion would look like in the general form. Okay, one ratio equaling another ratio. If this is true, then you can take the cross product. A times B is equal to, I'm sorry, A times D is equal to B times C. Okay, and that's what we're showing right here. That's the cross product um, for this, for uh, a proportion. And then that'll prove that they are equal. If this is true, then this is also true. Okay, hopefully this is all uh, familiar to you. If you want to pause the video real quick to write that down in your notes, you're more than welcome to. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our first example. <clears throat> this is this is all still new to me too, so bear with me here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write in pencil just just in case if I make any mistakes, um, I can erase them. Hopefully, you guys can see them on the screen. Okay, so our first example is going to be. This one right here. Let me zoom in for you guys. Okay. So it says here that the ratio of two complementary angles is three to seven. Find the measures of both angles. Okay. So what from we remember um, before? From what we remember before um, is that. Uh, if two angles are complementary, that means that they add up to 90 degrees, okay? So the way you would set something like this up, uh, if you have the ratio 3 to 7, you would say, okay, well, 3 of something, oops, 3 of something plus, I'm already messing up here, plus, this isn't good, plus seven of something is equal to 90, okay? Because it is a complementary angle. Remember, if two things add up to 90 degrees, that means they're complementary, okay? So the ratio of these two angles are complementary, and that's how we know that we're gonna make them equal to 90 degrees, okay? Hopefully you guys can see the writing. Let me might be a little bit better there. Okay. Hopefully that works. I don't want to use a pen because if I make a mistake then I can't can't erase it. Okay. So once you have your equation set up, you can solve this by hand or you can use nsolve. Okay. Um, I'll solve it by hand real quick. From here, you would add these two together to make 10x equals 90, okay? From there, you would divide both sides by 10, and you'd end up with x is equal to 9. I need to get a new pencil here. Okay. The nice thing about these videos, again, remember, you can always pause, rewind, fast forward. If, um, if you're if you get stuck in the video okay let me get a row let me get a pencil real quick because I don't let this pencil keep breaking on me wait a long second See if this one works a little bit better. All right, so that's um, example the first example. Actually, we're not done yet. 
sorry, it's been a while since I've done these two. Okay, so we're looking for the measure of both of these angles. So we found what x is, but x isn't the answer. From there, what we have to do is plug the x back into each of these um, terms, okay? So we'll plug the x back into here and plug the x back into here, okay? So what we really have is three times nine for this first term, that's our first angle, and then we'll also have seven times nine for the second angle, okay? So of course, three times nine, if you put that into your calculator, if you already know your times tables, that's gonna be 27, and then seven times nine is equal to 63. Now again, if you want, you can also put this into nsolve so that you can get your answer, all right? Um, you can put this into nsolve to first solve for your x, and then you can also use your calculator to find out what 3 times 9 is or what 7 times 9 is if you don't know uh, off of the top of your head, okay? So this is going to be our, our real answers, our 27 degrees and 63 degrees for our two angles, okay? All right, let's go into our next example here. Okay, example number two is going to be this problem here. The ratio of the measures of the angles in a triangle is 4 to 7 to 9. Find the measures of the angles. Okay, so we're going to look for the measures of all three angles. Now, um, this is what we call an extended ratio, okay? Four to seven to nine, that's the extended ratio. So let's go ahead and figure out how we're gonna do something like this if you don't remember from last time, from before the spring break. So again, you're gonna set up your ratios uh, in, an, in an algebraic equation, okay? You're gonna say, okay, four of something plus seven of something plus nine of something, okay, there's our ratio, four to seven to nine, is equal to, and according to the question, we're looking for the measures of the angles in a triangle. Well, we know that the measures of, a tr the measures of all three angles in a triangle should add up to 180 degrees, okay? So it's not gonna tell us that, we're gonna have to assume that, but we, that's something that we already know, all right? So again, you can uh, put this into nsolve, so that you can find your x. I'll go ahead and solve it by hand here real quick. Um, but if you're more comfortable with nsolve and you're successfully able to download your software, uh, use, use the TI Inspire, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and just cheat a little bit here and go straight to the answer. But normally you would divide this side by 20, this side by 20, and then 180 divided by 20 will give you the nine okay so that's not the answer though okay the answer is to find the measures of all three angles so to do that we're going to have to take the x and plug them back in here here and here okay so now we have four times nine 7 times 9 for the second angle, and 9 times 9 for the third angle. Okay. So 4 times 9 is going to get you 36. 7 times 9 is going to get you 63. And then, of course, 9 times 9 is going to get you 81. So here we go, 81. Okay, so that would be your answer. The angle, the measurements of the angles are 36, 63, 81. Be careful on your homework or on your classwork when you're working on this. Um, when you put in your answers on a question like this, make sure you put them in the order of the ratio. So if the ratio is 479, 479, make sure you put your answers in, in this order. Okay, if you put them in a different order, you could possibly get the wrong answer. So make sure you do that, okay? 
follow the order of the ratio. All right, so there's example two. Sorry about my handwriting. You know my handwriting is very messy. Um, and it's the same when I'm working from home. It hasn't changed. Okay, so there's example two. Let's go on to example three. All the examples that I'm working out right now are going to be very similar to what you're going to see on your assignment today. Okay, so example three here is going to be number 15. In this example, what they want you to do is to solve each proportion using the cross product property. How do we know it's a proportion? because it's two ratios um, being made equal to each other. And that's how we know it's a proportion, okay? So this is fairly easy. This is where you're gonna use the cross product um, method, okay, that you took in your notes a little bit earlier. Okay, so for the cross product method, what you wanna do, let me zoom in just a little bit more so that you see just this problem. Okay, that's good right there. Okay, so for the cross product um, method, what you want to do, of course, is multiply um, from here to here and make that equal from here to here. Okay. But the first thing that you want to make sure that you do is that anytime you see, and I, I think you'll remember this from class, Anytime you see a polynomial, okay, a polynomial is a number that has more than one term, two terms or more, okay? So in this case, this has a, this is a polynomial, the, the denominator in this fraction, because we have one, two different terms, okay? See here we have one term, one term, one term. Here we have two terms. When you have two terms, you want to make sure that you always protect it with parentheses before we start multiplying, okay? Now that we have the parentheses, we can go ahead and do our cross multiplication. What we're going to have here is 10 times 9 is equal to 2x minus 9 times 20. Now watch how I write this, okay? You don't have to write it this way, but as mathematicians, we're a little picky like this. And we like to put the monomial, which is a one-term number, on the outside of the binomial that's inside the parentheses. Okay, so that's how you would set up this equation. Now you can solve it by hand. I don't have enough room to solve this by hand, so I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to the answer. Um, I'll, I'll give you a quick refresher in your NSOL on how to solve this. Um, but for the time being, this one is going to be x is equal to 6.75. And let's go ahead and make sure that that's the case in NSOL. Let's double check that. Oops. There we go. Okay, so the equation that we had was uh, 10 times nine. So I'm gonna go menu, um, add calculator, Okay, menu algebra, right? And then one for numerical solve. Okay, so here again, our equation was 10 times nine, okay, equals, and then this part is where you wanna make sure that you write it down exactly the way you have it on your paper. Okay, 20 on the outside, open the parentheses, two X minus nine, close parentheses. Before we close off that last set of parentheses, that master set of parentheses, you have to do your comma x so that you let um, the calculator know which variable it is that you're trying to solve for. Okay, So close out the parentheses, hit enter, and you can see that that matches our answer, 6.75. Okay, Again, you can do it by hand if you feel more comfortable on that. If you need to see this done by hand, Make sure you attend the video conference that's coming up for your day, whether it's A day or B day. Make sure you attend the video conference and um, 
I'd be more than happy to show you how to solve something like this by hand, okay? If that's the method you prefer. All right, so let's go back to our equation here. All right, so yeah, it matches up. 6.75 was our answer, okay? So that's how you would solve something like that. Okay, let's take a look at another example similar to this one. Number 17. This will be our fourth example. Okay, you're going to be seeing the same exact, you're going to be seeing the same exact problems uh, on your homework or on your classwork. Okay, so that's, I'm only going to show you stuff that's going to be useful to your homework, to your classwork. I won't show you anything extra. All right. So number 17 is the same thing, but if you notice now we have two polynomials, one in the numerator here, one in the numerator here, but uh, also notice that x is on both sides. That's not going to change your method. The method will still stay the same. If you were to solve this by hand, it might throw you off just a little bit. It might create a, uh, some extra steps, but for the most part, uh, if you're using nsolve, it's the same process, okay? So always remember, protect your polynomials with parentheses before you start doing your cross, your cross products, okay? So here we go. First, uh, first, first cross product is gonna be x minus 20 times 18. Again, watch how I write it. I'm gonna do the monomial on the outside and then put in my, my monomial on, uh, my polynomial on the inside of the parentheses, okay? Next cross product is gonna be three times x minus 11. We'll write that just the way we see it, three times x minus 11, okay? Again, if you were to solve this by hand, you would have to distribute the 18 to the x and then to the negative 20, the three to the x and the three to the negative 11, if you wanna solve it by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and use n solve, okay? Um, again, we're gonna cheat just a little bit. I'm gonna put that x is equal to 21.8. And then let's go ahead and check uh, and solve here real quick. Still learning how to use all this software together. Okay, so again, we're going to go algebra, numerical solve. All right, so just the way we wrote it down, 18 times x minus 20 equals... 3 x minus 11. If I'm going too fast, I know that you can't tell me that I'm going too fast. Oops. Um, but you can pause the video and you can rewind. So that's kind of the luxury of having the lecture um, at your fingertips like that. Okay. Before I close off the master set of parentheses, I have to put comma x to let the calculator know I'm looking for the x variable. And then I can close off that last set of parentheses, hit enter, and you'll see that that's our answer, 21.8. Here we go. Okay, 21.8 right there. All right, so that was example number four. Example number five. Is going to be right here. Okay. So the directions state to use the given ratios to solve each problem. Okay, so we're going to go back to ratios here. It says here that the ratio of the measure of two complementary angles is 7 to 8. What is the measure of the smaller angle? Okay, so always be careful of what they're asking. Here, um, they're asking for the measure of the smaller angle. So they don't want to know what both angles are. They just want to know what the measure of the smaller angle is. I'll give you a hint. It's going to be the angle that it's associated with the 7, right? Obviously, 7 is smaller than 8. So this is going to be this one. And once we find out the actual measurements of the angles, you'll see here that, 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 um, that that's true, that the one that goes first will be smaller than the one that goes second, okay? So again, you're gonna set up your ratios. You're gonna set up your ratios um, in an algebraic expression, 
All right. When you see something like this, you say, okay, seven of something plus eight of something. Okay. Is going to be equal to, well, whatever it is, whatever it means to be complementary. Okay. In order for it to be complementary, two angles must add up to 90 degrees. Okay. Don't get that confused with supplementary. Supplementary is 180. If you happen to get a supplementary problem in your uh, assignment today, you'll know to use 180. But remember, complementary is 90. Okay. All right. So now that we have the equation set up, I'll go ahead and solve it by hand, or you can use n solve, whichever one you want to use. I won't use n solve on all the problems just to kind of speed things up. I know these videos are going to be pretty lengthy, um, which is which is uh, pretty much uh, in line with my lectures in, in, in class. Okay, and there it is. So that's the value for our x. We don't know the answer just yet. The answer wants to know what is the measure of the smaller angle. Well, the smaller angle, remember I said, is probably going to be the one that is associated with the 7. Okay, so to find the measurement of this angle, we've got to plug the x back into here. Okay. So once we plug in the 7 times our x, which is 6, 7 times 6, that's going to get us our 42. Okay, and this is our answer right here, 42. All right, now you can double check. You can put the 6 times the 8 right here, right? 6 times the 8, that's going to get you 48. And notice 48 is bigger than 42, so 42 is the smaller the smaller angle okay so there's your answer right there if you're not sure if you don't trust yourself plug the 6 back into the 8 also then compare the two numbers which one's smaller 42 or 48 you can also do it that way okay all right so that's example number five and I believe that's the last example Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's the last example. Uh, pretty easy stuff. Like I said, it's just review from last time. Um, your assignment will be 10 problems long. Pretty standard, like what we had in class. The only difference is um, I'm only going to assign one to two assignments for the week. For this week, since we um, we're really getting us like a start in the middle of the week, we will um, this will be the only assignment for the remainder of the week. Your first assignment was your survey. Um, I do want to give you a, a free hundred on the survey, so make sure you get your surveys turned in. Um, now, when I activate the assignments in Schoology, it's going to be active for only five school days. Okay, so it's not counting the weekends. I don't count the weekends, but five school days. So you have to get it turned in by the end of the five school days. Uh, if you're an A day student, you have five school days. If you're a B day student, you'll have um, an additional day to make your five days. Okay, since you'll be seeing this on Thursday, A day is going to be seeing this on Wednesday. Um, but again, if you are um, A day or B day, regardless, tonight when I load up this, um, let me bring the full screen up. When I load up um, the lecture, you will um, it'll be active for all all days for it, whether you're A day or B day, um, any of the periods. Before I used to have it, um, I would activate your assignment right after the lecture. But being that this is more like of a self-paced thing, you'll be able to access it immediately. Okay, so um, well. Even if I give you the time, that's not relevant because you'll be seeing this on a recording. But um, tonight, or whenever you see this in the morning, um, you can actually take a look at the assignment. You can take a look at the lecture and then try to see if you can do some of the problems on your own. Okay. If you have questions, that's the point that you'll save your question, show up to the video conference, and then you can ask your questions there. I'll have the document camera ready to go so that we can work out some of the problems from the homework or from um, some, maybe something you didn't understand from the lecture itself.
Okay, so um, this one's a pretty short lecture. I'm gonna try to keep them between 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm already hitting 30 minutes, so I'll go ahead and sign off and upload the video here into Schoology. Have a good day, guys. We will see you at the video conference if you need further assistance, okay? Take care, guys. Peace out. Oh, this is my wrestling shirt for the day. Every day I'm going to wear a new wrestling shirt. Sami Zayn, baby. Woo, too sweet. All right, talk to you later. Bye.